It is time for our match reviews. Match reviews. And starting off our match reviews for the day is a Slade. Slade of Rivia. Uh, very excellent Witcher reference. I love I love Witcher so much. Uh, with 5k plus hours, so you have five times the amount I would usually expect somebody in Dead by Daylight to have to be at least uh, moderately competent in the game in terms of their fundamentals, that being macro and uh, macro and micro uh, knowledge. You are playing the Xenomorph, good old the Xenomorph, which is probably uh, the best character you can ask for advice for here on the channel. And I've also been trying to post more Xenomorph channel on the YouTube side of things. So please send me Xenomorph match reviews. It's what I'm the most knowledgeable in. I am number four worldwide, number one NA. Also wrote the guide. So like that is, uh, I, I know a great deal about this character um, <laughs> to the point where I'm even like, be like, hey, that thing on the wiki doesn't tell the full story. Like that number exists, but like it's more complicated than that. So, um, yeah, definitely ask me more about Xena stuff. You're on Suffocation Pit, which Suffo Pit, it depends on which variation it is. If you're on Suffo Pit 2, Suffo 2 is really uh, is a lot nicer for the Xenomorph. You can tail attack over a lot of the, the normal Mac loops and you don't have that choke point with like a bajillion tiles into each other. Um, but if it's it's Suffo Pit 1, it's a little bit more complicated because that while that choke point is good for 3 genning, it's like... It's it, all those tiles back to back to back to back create some very nasty setups that even the Xenomorph has a trouble dealing with. So, yeah, let's take a look at Yan Xenomorphs. Okay, so Emergency Helmet, what is, in my opinion, Xenomorph's best add on. Um, so that's a good pick there. Your other add on pick of Parker's Headband is not great. Parker's Headband is like probably bottom five, bottom 10 Xenomorph add on because the effect from Parker's Headband is. It's borked on both ends because the haste is too low and the speed is too low. Or the, the duration is too low. Sorry, misspoke there. The duration is not that long and the haste isn't that good. <laughs> so, like, realistically, for this to matter, for this add-on to matter, they need to either buff the duration or buff the speed, right? So if it's a short duration but it's really fast, that's fine. Or vice versa, where it's a long duration but you're, no, you're not really that quick. That's fine, but it's just bad that both the numbers are bad. <laughs> so it just like it, the, the effect is so, so small that it's not worth running, especially as a green add on when you can just be running Lambert star map, which is this the second best add on or in a lot of people's opinions, the first best add on um, as a yellow, which is a rarity below this one. Um, there's a plenty of other good greens for this character as well, like Kane's helmet, which is the, the anti heal, uh, although that's you know, been kind of not nerfed itself, but retroactively nerfed uh, because of, you know, a lot of heal perks being buffed in the game. But you can run Self-Destruct Bolt, which is your top tier, like, chase add-on. There's a lot of better options than this. Semiotic Keyboard, um, that sort of thing. In terms of your build, your build is not great. Uh, Bamboozle, great. Great pick. One of Xenomorph's best uh, add-ons, uh, especially when it's run with the self-destruct bolt that it was af after mentioned. Um, you, The rest of your build is kind of puzzling. Uh, brutal, I understand, because sometimes you'll face players that like understand that once you're outside the 4.8 meters of the Xenomorph's tail attack, they're going to pre-drop a lot. And if you're running players like that, Brutal can come in handy. End Fury on Xeno is like an anti-synergy pick because you have so much anti-palette synergy as this character already uh that running an like two perks dedicated to anti-palette is kind of silly right i there's an infamous story on this channel that while i was making the guide there was like a week where i was just testing builds for the guide so i could give build suggestions yeah this is how brands law got made <laughs> this is where the story is coming there is a there's an infamous story on this channel about of brands law uh there's other infamous laws out there in the dvd community like odds law like which is whoever bought the map offering is the most likely to dc um Brand's Law is if you build, if you bring a build with the intention to get value out of it, that you're not going to get value. It is not going to happen. <laughs> but anytime you're not doing that, it's more likely to happen. Because we went to run an Acidic Blood stun build with a bunch of these perks like Fury, and we didn't get stunned for six straight games. Six straight games. We did not get stunned for like six straight games. And of course, the seventh game when we took it all off, got stunned. <laughs> Well, that is Brand's Law. But, case of point being, is you don't really get stunned a lot of this character. And in most cases, it's better to just wait out the stun and just tail attack them up over the pallet. That's why Acidic Blood is not that great of an add-on as well. 
is because not only is it like got a very specific slim timer to, to trigger because it's got the 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 moment you come out of a control station for a little bit you have to get stunned within a certain time period uh, but on top of that you don't get stunned a lot as this character anyway <laughs> so like and also the whole reward for stunning is an injury state which if you just wait out the drop and tail attack over it you already get the injury state <laughs> like it's it's just redundant so first like these you probably shouldn't be bringing the downfall of TV was that there was only like one in five killers. It, I, it's because I have to make the killer bots, I'm pretty sure. Because if you DC, this is kind of loud. If you DC, uh, a killer bot takes your place. So they have to design all that. I doesn't feel like my YouTube's so loud. But you find somebody pretty early, which is good. Um. So with this situation, like, the, the, we like to call this in the industry Bam Brain. <laughs> we call this Bamboozle Brain. Um, yeah, you block off that window, but this is the weaker of the two windows of this main building. This window's the really strong one you gotta worry about, because this has a breakable wall, and even when you do break this brick wall, this window's still very strong if you take it, if you guys are chasing from the right to the left here. So if you were gonna bamboozle a window, you should have bamboozled the one, like, straight ahead, because that's the stronger window. This one is pretty circumventable. Because all it has is just this vault, and then uh, there's that really, really weak pallet over here to the left. So, if you're going to bamboozle a, um, if you're going to bamboozle a window, make sure you're bamboozling the stronger window out of two, if you are presented with multiple. Yeah, like, you should have followed him up and then vaulted there. That was a good attempt. You just got kind of stuck on the cart there. What am I going to say? I don't have to say anything. You guys know. What am I going to say? Dry kick. Yes. Yes. Match review viewers. <laughs> Why do we not dry kick, kids? Why is that not a great thing? Especially with multiple survivors nearby. No moisture kick. <laughs> is that is that my legacy? Moist critical? Dry critical? Is that me? Oh, gosh. I just bunked the mic. My apologies. Why don't we dry kick gens? Why don't we just stop mid chase and kick gens? Why do we not do that? Relevant when survivors are nearby, as opposed to giraffe, it's irrelevant. Yeah, it's a waste of time. Yeah, they'll just unloot. They're just gonna come back and undo the 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 kick that you just did. It's a little bit less punishing because we have the uh, the five percent that you have to do to get it uh, back uh, from unregressing. But if there's multiple survivors nearby, it doesn't matter who you chase in that scenario. Whoever's left is going to just get right back on the gen and just undo the dry kick you just did. I understand this play if you had, like, nowhere to hide eruption, because then you get aura reading for the chase. You, If you have eruption, it sets up. Uh, when you get that down, you're going to get rewarded with a 10% damage hit and even more info if they're currently on it. Like, that would make sense to me. I think your idea here is that, like, you have brutal strength, so it's okay to waste this time. But match time is gen time. So this is still wasted time. This is still something that's ultimately not going to serve you. Uh, too much, especially when you're running zero slowdown, you can't really afford to waste time, so I would not be doing this. Yeah, all you did is kind of just give them a big head start, which is unfortunate. And you choose to get back in the tunnels instead of just chasing the two people that are at main. Interesting. Okay. My dry kick, I say forgive me, Ben. You should have just tail attacked there. See, this is why you don't run in Fury on this character or stun per or, uh, perks in general. Or even acidic blood. <laughs> like, you have her hit here. She's a hit here. She is a sitting duck. She is not only in clear view of your tail while you're in crawler mode, she's about to be in a locked animation, which means she can't even dodge if she wants to. And you completely forego this hit because you're trying to farm value out of your perks. This was a hit. This was a free hit. You just ignored it. That was very risky. Oh, very risky. Okay. See, like, this is a good window to bam because it's shack window. Wow, they were just greedy in that. Don't Brand yell at me for this? Was this a good scenario? See, you have a bad dry kicking habit. Very bad dry kicking habit. Like, usually it's the beam that, like, okay, dry kicking, but, like, you have a bad habit about doing that. 
I'm glad that- I, I'm glad that the feedback for a lot of you is that- ooh, that was close. Like, you think of me yelling at you when you would dry kick? Because that's- that's good. That means I'm reinforcing a good habit. <laughs> I'm reinforcing a good habit, so. I always get genuinely curious when people, like, watch the match reviews or multiple times submitters and then they dry kick a lot. I'm like, does that not occur to you? But I would, like... Because that's like a meme at this point. It's like, stop dry kicking. Match time is gen time and stop dry kicking. Or, like, the memes. If you know about the meme, why would you do it? You stopped to kick this. I don't... You... Here's the deal. I feel like you're way too, like, perk value braining right now. And it's literally costing you free hits, like, all over the place. Like, you, you're you trying so hard to get value out of, like, Brutal, out of, like, End Fury, that you're actively foregoing hits on these people just to get perk value. And it's going to hurt you in the end. It's going to hurt you in the end. Like, this is not going to work out for you, doing it this way. Thankfully, you're right here. Once again, you could have tail attacked him there. Okay, she just runs back into you like a goober. <laughs> she just runs back into you like a goober. Why is he just standing there? Oh, he just didn't know you were there. Huh? What? Be so for you right now. What was that? <laughs> what? There was a guy standing out there absolutely zero resources whatsoever. And you just left him? Even if even if it's one of these things where you're like, I'm trying to be nice because he just got off hook, at least slug him. You don't have to hook him if you're trying to be a nice guy, but at least slug him. And off the record, he was being pretty loud. I don't think he had off the record he was being loud. Yeah, he's being loud. He doesn't have off the record. Off the record silences your grunts of pain. Even then, it would still be the right option to just hit him, because at least he has to go mend. I don't know why you just pass on hitting him here. Is it so I can go back and dry kick the gen? Does she make this? She does not. She was close. Yeah, that was very close. At least he has Spirit Fury uh, ready. <laughs> okay, so you... <laughs> I don't know if you knew that it does that, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um you can break those. You can break the blue ones. Uh when the lid is open and the in the the color thing is blue, um that means that you can destroy them and if you get into the tunnel either while it's open or while it's actively being grabbed, it also breaks it. I don't think you knew that. I think you just forgot to break it. <laughs> if you did know that, good, but I don't I don't think so. So make sure you're breaking those. <laughs> That's a pretty obscure Xeno you know, thing to know. Is that... Like, some people will know that you can, when the lid's open and the, the, the screen is blue, you can break them. But a lot of people don't know that if, like, you travel in while it's open, or if they grab it the moment that you come out of the tunnel where they break, it auto-breaks it for you. Good. You don't know where anybody is, so go into the tunnel. Use your built-in information to help you. Hey, Brad. How are you? You're wrong this Monday. Why do you move away from the footsteps? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down. Slow down there, partner. Slow down. So you see footsteps over here.
But you get them. But when you come out, you don't go towards them for some reason. Yeah, they're over here. Sorry, you swing your your mouse so quickly. Maybe you didn't see them because you were swinging your mouse so quickly. That's saying something because I I play on 6K DPI. There's footsteps right here. The orange little glowy stuffs. Those are people right there. You get those for 60 meters. So, yeah. I don't know why you just go back into the control station and choose not to pursue that. It's really weird. You act like you didn't see them at all. <laughs> why the tea bag? How does this go bad for you? Even with all the mistakes you're making, like, they're just not making the gen progress for this to matter. Okay, shock bout's already gone. Oh, this should be pretty easy down. You just try to fake the window vault on the wrong side. Is that what just happened? Yeah. Yeah, because this match goes on for, like, another, like, almost 10 minutes. Yeah, 4.8 meters. You don't know, you know the length for that. Yeah, how do you... How does this end up going for as long as it does? I keep for not dry kicking the gem there. Did you think this ace was the other ace? Is that why you committed to that so much? Because that would make sense. I don't have the same pants. Good attempt. You do have to bop them on the head, because, like, if they're crouching like this... So the way this works is the Zemur's tail attack essentially is like a lightsaber. You know, lightsabers, like, you know, they go... And they just, like, the little blade comes out, and then it goes away when they turn it off. Um, it's kind of like that. Um, so it's one repeating hitbox that extends outward and just repeats itself until it's done. Um, so uh, it doesn't really actually have, like, any curvature to it. Um, so what you're doing here and why this is missing so much is because you're essentially, when you're hitting somebody over the top of something, it's because survivors have a big pill bottle hitbox um, that extends, like, even slightly above their heads, and they can't, they kind of just can't help that. So even when they're crouching, um, like, you're, you're, the point is you're trying to, like, bop them in the head, right? You're trying to bop them at the top of that, that cylinder or that pill shape. Um, so you need to aim like closer to the edge here. I think you just got discouraged because you hit the edge once that you're like, okay, well, I'm just going to aim really high then. Um, but you need to like, especially when she's crouching like this, you need to like aim way lower. You can hit the top of the pill. Yeah, smart to just rotate her around. That was a good attempt. That was the right idea. Yeah, once you get more practice, this will be good. Like, the thing you're... The, the things you're doing here are the right plays. You just don't have the execution down yet. Which will come with time. I like the choice to leave her because you wasted too much time on it. Is it pain? The horizontal shots function essentially the same. I don't know why you ignore that turret there. Because, like, the reason you don't ignore the turret here especially is because you get slowed down as the Xenomorph while you're under the effects of the flame attacks only in crawler mode. Only in crawler mode. Nowhere else. Which is why I didn't even find it for the longest time. Um, so you slow down to, I believe, it's with... It's 92% it's naturally with emergency helmet. I forget the number. It's like 103 movement speed, I think, is what it is. It's something like that. Um, so... Even if your idea here was like, I'm going to greed the, the turret to get the tail attack through the window. Once the flame charges start hitting you, you get slowed. So you're going to lose that distance. All right. Good night, Ari. Appreciate you. 103. Yeah, I think it's 103. I have that number somewhere. I have to go find it. But yeah, you can probably just do the simple math about it, too. Do 
you should have broken that earlier. Yeah, vertical shots, like, it's a whole new world. Dazzling place, I never knew. Horizontal shots play mostly the same, thankfully. So you can still, like, strafe and stuff. But, like, bopping people over the top of stuff is different. Eight actor confirmed, I guess. Ooh, careful. Yeah, you get somebody dead at two gens, which is good. That's fine, because Jane may be the only one around, to your knowledge, so that's better than the other ones. Still not ideal, but like, that was better than the other chicks. Dude, what? What? What happened? Forty dollars or treats? Yeah, somebody else was around. Let's see, that's why we don't do that. Why did not sound that way? Do you have value from Fury? Yeah, it's almost like this character doesn't really get stunned. <laughs> this is also why people think Xenomorph sucks, by the way, and I don't mean this in any way negatively, but like. Like, that loop there, that waist tight loop, she's dead there, realistically. If you're good with the tail tag, she's toast. There's nothing you can do. But until, until you get to that point where you're relatively good with the tail attack, like, it's, like, you see, you saw what happened the last time we chased Jane there. It was like, it's like, that was like a super long chase because it just kept hitting this, that, and everything in the environment instead. But, you know, once you get good with the tail attack, you just bop him, that chase is over in, like, three seconds. That's an exaggeration, of course, but like it's super quick. So that I think that contributes a lot to why people hate the Zoomorph too, is because they don't want to put in that effort to be good. And it's not like Larry, where like Larry's known for their high skill floor, but like it's very easy to see why Larry's good when you get good, right? Because overclock is very like you're you're glowing, you're kicking pallets out of the way in like two seconds, you're turbo vaulting. Like it's very easy to see the results of you being better, right? There's no way to like mess up. Singularity once you're in overclock. Well, there is, but like I'm speaking in layman's terms. Like, like me, even even if I'm playing inefficiently in overclock mode, I'm still at least getting resources out of the way, right? ZM or if it's like if you play inefficiently, you just don't get the hit, <laughs> which is people, you know, it's very frustrating. So, all right, rest well, horror. Thank you for trusting me, the people. I appreciate it. There you go. Finally, you got value. Now that we're at Dark's notes, two generators. <laughs> got that hit regardless? True. You're honestly right. <laughs> If you had just been patient and tail attack, you also get that hit anyways. Pretty speedy. Hopefully you're well. Makes me kinda nervous. <laughs> I could just just looking at my steam without contact. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna let the, I'm gonna give this guy a piece of my mind. You should get rid of that turret. Yeah, you leave turrets up like nobody's business too. It is not great. Why don't you just commit to a chase here? Like, you keep trying to push them off this gen, but you're also not committing to any chases. So, like, they're just gonna keep getting hit and coming back, getting hit and coming back, getting hit and coming back. Minus rep is a poopy butt. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, true, I am a poopy butt, but, like... Don't say it. Don't let, you don't have to let people know. That's just hard to hit. Even if you're good, that one's hard to hit. Diagonal shots through windows like that, like, nine times out of ten, you're gonna clock the window. That's not your fault. It's just that, like, Xenomorph's hitbox is 14 centimeters around. Uh, so it's like, it's pretty, it's a pretty chonky hitbox. So that and, uh, collision may not be as you appear at the same time as, uh, create some very nasty, uh, situations.
It's like the Chonky hitbox is nice when you're going for strafe shots, but not so much when you're doing anything else. <laughs> Any anywhere else, the big Chonky hitbox is a hindrance. Luckily, Jane is really loud. Now you were at the right level initially. You didn't need to like aim super high up like that. It's a good idea to leave her here because she's not near any gens, so it's not like she's gonna like win the game from there. She's just gonna waste your time. So I like the choice to leave there. Yeah, see you, Dusk. It was nice having you. She gives up. You win because she gives up. They didn't need to give up there. Yeah, Rebecca through. If she started, if Jane starts working in that gen up by main, and um, Ace is just patient instead of bum rushing and gets by you and gets her, this game's over for you. I don't know why Rebecca gave up there. This was 100% winnable. You guys, they even had a gen that was like 60, 70%. That's crazy. Uh, don't need to be art, dude. It's so funny. This is so funny. This has been such a long match for you, but it's like it's the character I know the most about. So I'm going to be like talking a lot. Okay. My favorite thing that I love oh so much about watching people play Xenomorph that don't play Xenomorph very often. Sorry for the flashbang. Um, <laughs> it's just like so we'll have like an object, right? Like, let's take like those waist highs. I have not used paint in forever. This isn't gimp. What is happening? Like, we'll have like a waist high object, right? And let's say, uh, uh, big angry killer, big angry xenomorph, grr. Let's draw a little bean. And the homie is a quadruped. Male. Um, draw a little survivor person. You'll be in a situation like that, where like it's like a like one of the crate tiles, like the path path, uh, path tiles, and they'll be standing like this. If the Z-Morph realistically can hit a hit hit a tail attack right here. They gotta get it like level with the box, but they can hit that, right? Realistically, the hitbox is more like this, but you can totally hit that. And that's how you should be hitting it. But I see so many people, it's so funny. You can tell somebody doesn't regularly play Z-Morph, because like most people that play the character at least fairly often understand that like hits should look like this. Sometimes they'll look like this where you go a little bit up and then down. But <laughs> when the people don't play Z-Morph, their, their shit looks like wah. <laughs> like they go all the way up and then all the way back down. It's like, you don't, I, okay. So here's the deal. The reason that happens is because a lot of content creators when Z-Morph first came out made the assumption that the Z-Morph tail attack worked like a rock on a string which it doesn't work that way. If you must see it, this is how the tail attack actually works. It's just one reoccurring hitbox that just emerges, follows your tail, and then ends once the attack is over. Think of it more like a spear. I already made the lightsaber analogy earlier. Um, so it's, it's definitely not... Um, it's definitely not like a rock on a string. But because people feel that way, that's why they do this weird stuff where they're just like, I'm going to do like the most exaggerated arc ever to hit somebody over like the smallest object because they think it works that way. Because that was a misnomer that was spread when the character was first re uh, first release and kind of like didn't really go away because nobody really corrected that and not enough people play the character to really correct that. But it's it's more like that. You hit that. It's not, it's not a, ooh, ooh, look at me, look at my, me and my little hitbox that I can just drag around like a, like a mace. It's just like that. And one of these will hit them <laughs> as it goes down. But yeah. Probably more information than you ever needed for a match for you, but. What I know. Ah, screaming. <laughs> At least you get a 3k here, at the very least. That's Rebecca through, but... Yeah. That shit wild? Yeah. It's, uh... 
It's first in some years around though. It's still it's still pretty chunky. It's like basketball sized. The words come out. Yeah, people still believe that. People still believe that. And I think that's like the guts of the game, right? Like, but people still argue with me. Like, that's it. It doesn't work that way. I'm like, okay, well, okay. You just, at that point, you're just willing. To, you're you're just not willing to learn. So, I can't help you. <laughs> Or sometimes that's more because of lag than anything, though. That's the cool thing about this Eomorph's Tale. I guess it's because of like the repeated hitbox thing, is it doesn't really get too awful under lag. If anything, it makes it worse because like the faster you swing, the more like like the better your your spread is. So like if anything, it's like bad. <laughs> it's not helpful. Flat Earth yeah. At this point, it doesn't matter. You can just like chase him to oblivion. Like he, he will eventually die. The Tath was actually he just kicked. Ooh, hey, Macaloon. Woo! Can't wait till that's fixed. That's unfortunate. Like I said, he just cooked either way. He's cooked either way. <laughs> Woo wee. That was a very long match review for no other reason than I just kept talking too much about this character. <laughs> All right, so. For your main takeaways, uh, you had uh, a couple of these that were pretty serious and then um, some that weren't, but I'm going to focus in on the big three. Uh, so the first thing is that, you know, this is kind of a meme on the channel, but uh, you dry kick way, way, way too much. Dry kicking is not that great because especially in the scenarios you were kicking in where there was multiple survivors around, they're just going to get right back on that gen and undo the progress you just did. Um, if you're if you're going to dry kick a gen, there's kind of only like a couple scenarios where it's good, where if you're under the impression that nobody else is around, because then you're actually going to get value out of that gen regressing. Um, it's obviously nobody's going to be unregressing it for quite some time. Uh, the second is dry kicking a gen uh, right next to a hook because that is making the survivor make a choice between do I want to save or do I want to unregress the gen and the closer they get to their next hook phase uh, that gets an even an increasingly more stressful decision to make for the survivor so you kind of like got to put them into a, a, a decision that they can mess up but other than that you shouldn't be dry kicking you shouldn't be doing it especially at the rate that you were brutal does not make it better you should not be doing that um Second is you were you I understand that like you were running some interesting uh, perks here, uh, but you were playing too much to get value out of them. There were so many instances and times where you could have just hit the survivor with a tail attack, but you're like, no, I want to get stunned because I want enduring value. No, I want the pallet to drop for them to get away so I can get brutal and into spirit fury value. Like you were actively throwing away free hits just to get value out of your perks, which was. Like, this match would have been over like three gens if you were actually hitting people with your tail attack. Like you, you, you would have been hitting people. Like this, th this game would have been over so much quicker. But you chose to kind of willingly extend it just to get perk value. So like, I don't know. I I would not have gone that way. Would not have gone that way. Um. I feel like uh, a big issue that you also had was that you kind of just didn't deal with turrets at all. It's kind of like Xeno number one. Number one big thing with Xenomorph is like, please break flame turrets. Please, please break your Blake. Please break your flame turrets. Try saying that three times fast. Um, there was that, especially that, uh, especially egregious moment where like you were chasing Rebecca into Shaq and you chose not to break the turret because you're like, I'm just going to tail attack her through the window. And then you didn't get to tail tackle through the window because of the slowdown from the flame turret. Um, so that's why we break the flame turrets. And a lot of those turrets that you left out came back to haunt you anyway. So you kept having to deal with them. Um, so if you just broke those right away, you wouldn't have to deal with them. I'm guilty of this. I do this all the time. Um, I kind of play lazy on Zemurf when I'm on stream, to be honest, because I just kind of like I don't, I don't care about the game that way. As long as I play well enough that people go, oh, he's not terrible. <laughs> like, that's that's it. I'm mostly just fishing for funny tail attacks, right? Because I just want to make compilations and laugh, you know? 
That's why I'm also not in the not in the tunnels very often. Realistically, you save like four seconds of time uh, traveling in the tunnels instead of just walking on average. But like, eh. <laughs> eh. but yeah, you should definitely be breaking your turns. So long, my brain hurts. Yeah, I would definitely take a break if your brain is hurting. Those are, those would be like the three main focuses. Honestly, the tail attacks you were going for. Once you get the execution down are going to be great ideas. Most of the tail attacks you were actively going for, even though you missed a lot, they were good ideas. You just, you just need to keep practicing. The, they were the right places to go for tail attacks. You, you just don't quite have it yet. And keyword yet, you will get there, but it just takes trial and error. And hopefully the, the hitbox stuff and showcase helped you. So you can visualize kind of like, oh, okay. That makes sense. Hopefully that helped. All right. 